come back to the to, to the larger part of your message, which I don't think anyone would argue with. But it still raises a question, why are the forces of harmony, to use a term, losing out to the forces of discord? Because we don't, it's so obvious, common sense tells us that harmony and all the things that you describe as consequences of it are better for any individual being. And yet, the story is not improving. Why do you say we lost out? You know, I said, why are we losing out? No, why are we losing out? We are not losing out. The, the problem is that these things have been happening in the world always, much more than what you have today. Today, this violence and bloodshed is at the minimum compared to what it was in the past few centuries. We are at a minimal violent state. But today, if blood comes out somewhere, it spills into your sitting room. I'm sure you have a television in your bedroom, it spills there. If you have one in your dining room, it spills into your plate. People have <laughs> televisions in their bathroom, it'll be in their bathtubs. So, because it just comes to us with such power, today we think it's very big. But hundred years ago, if it so happened, hundred and fifty people got killed in Paris, we would be sitting very peacefully in Goa without a worry in the world, okay? But today what happens in Paris explodes into our homes because of the media and the television and the means that we have. Because of that, we feel for it much more. And that's one reason why we can also stop it in a certain way. But it's an exaggerated sense of violence. I'm not saying it's not violent, it's horribly violent. But still, we have an exaggerated perception because now the violence did not happen in Paris, it happened in our homes, in every one of our homes, all over the world. So it's very magnified like never before. But if you actually count the numbers, we are at a very lower level of violence compared to… If you take last twenty centuries, what violence the world has seen and what we are seeing today is much, much lower. Well, if consciousness has risen as a consequence of communication, then that too will have consequences. And one of the consequences will be, for example, as we are seeing now, the uh, almost inevitability of the state to respond with reaction violence. And then how does one get the cycle under control? Is there under control? Or shall we just, uh, we just resigned to watching a very macabre drama helplessly? See, there are short-term actions that one has to take. <coughs> we can't live in an illusory world. If somebody is shooting at you, you will try to transform them now. Somebody is shooting at you, you have to shoot at them right now. But long-term solution is transformation. We have to invest in that. We have not invested in that. Today we think if they shoot at us, we shoot at them and the job is done. It's not done because the new crop will come. So the long-term investment in individual human beings, being peaceful and joyful by our own, their own nature must be done. Because if this investment is not done, this is a lot of work. This no, no political leader or a government is interested in doing it because in five years they cannot show any results. This is only the work of madmen like me, okay? You work for a lifetime, you make an incremental change and you think it's okay. So, this is not for high achievers <laughs> because <laughs> this is not a high achieving field. If you work for an entire lifetime, you leave an incremental change in a certain population, okay? But if this is not sustained, not just by one person or ten, or ten people, but uh, by a large number of people, if it's not taken up, because right now, this is our only challenge, human consciousness. In terms of our capability to do things, like never before as a humanity, we are empowered. Every problem on him, of humanity, whether you name it, it's nourishment, education, health, whatever, envi ecology, everything we can address, we have the resource, we have the capability, we have the technology. Only thing missing is a concerned human being. We are not manufacturing those concerned human beings. When I use the word manufacturing, yes, they have to be manufactured. 
in what kind of homes they grow up, what kind of societies they grow up, what is told to them right from their childhood, manufactures a concerned human being. We have not invested in manufacturing conscious and concerned human beings. We think just by putting up a slogan, people will be transformed now. This is a lifelong work and a certain segment of population needs to take it up because right now this is the only challenge missing. We have everything in place, but are we going to do it? That's a question. As a generation of people, we have to look at this, every one of us. Are we going to let this opportunity pass? Because never before in the history of humanity, any other generation had this opportunity, but if they wished, they could solve all the problems on the planet. No other generation had this opportunity, we have it. But are we going to let it pass or are we going to do something about it? This determines what kind of people we are. Yep.